so it's time for a video update, I suppose. Um, this is my second time being sick this month in May. Uh, the first time was after the, the Golden Week series of holidays, and I came down with a cold. And this time, uh, I don't know what. It kind of felt like a like an intestinal flu kind of a thing, but it still was kind of like a cold and. I don't know what the hell happened with me, but like uh, the first night, I was delirious all night long. I, I had this this dream that Julian Assange was like a starfighter pilot and he was saving the galaxy. And the whole time, like I was actually watching the clock on my wall. So even though I was asleep, I was kind of still like half asleep, and I was conscious throughout the whole thing. And it was just really, really bizarre. And usually that only happens when I have a stomach bug. And uh, so, what, Monday I was at work and I had like zero appetite. And I thought maybe it was because uh, liver was on the menu for, for lunch that day. And I'm like, oh God, I can't stand it. Um, maybe it was um, the the news that uh, Lando Calrissian is supposedly a pansexual, and uh, you know that he would, you know, do women, little boys, chicken, mud, whatever. Um, but it turns out that was just fake news, anyways. So, yeah, I, I just 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 felt really weird. So this is my second day I'm staying home, and uh, the fever. I had like a really high fever, but uh, this time. Today, I'm doing better. I'm just weak. My stomach's still in okay, I guess, but it still feels like, you know, I'm slowly getting my appetite back. But by tomorrow, I'm sure I'll be strong enough to pull the ears off a of Gundark. So, enough of the silly banter. Let's just, uh, I'm just going to show you all the, the, the neat stuff that I'm working on and stuff I've bought. So... Follow me on this whimsical adventure as I give you a tour of uh, Plastic Model World. So, first of all, this is the progress of what's going on with the, the MiG-29 Fulcrum. So, as you can see, I have the panel lining done. Um, I think I might need to remove a bit more. This it's, it's looks a little bit filthy. I don't really want that to be kind of filthy looking. Um, but I, I do, I, I probably, I want to go over this with a, maybe a wash. Just like, like what, you would call that a, a filtering wash. And I think maybe I might use this uh, gray of gray and just do a wash over this. Because the colors really stand out on this camo scheme. And it's just a little bit too contrasty. Con is that a word? Yeah. So, something, um, I think it was in the, the, the last video I updated, this thing. Um, it, I, I had to scratch this. And it busted off, so I had to re-glue it and I had to repaint it. It kind of sucks. This thing that I had scratched, it, it broke off. I had to reattach it with glue. So, just stuff is happening. You know, it's just, uh, whatever. But, I guess this shows that I'm, I'm getting better at modeling. Because I'm able to, uh, you know, salvage stuff and, you know, uh, s scratch stuff to make it work. You know, just like this uh, thingy on the back here as well. So hopefully I'm going to have this done pretty soon. And I'm feeling better enough today I might I might actually work on models. Yesterday I just stayed in bed and watched stuff. Uh, the Eggplane Flanker is looking nice. This is almost done. All I need to do is just polish up the canopy glass. And clear that up a bit because there was a bit of spray, underspray. Like, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Um, it's just like right here. It it looks kind of dirty. 
kind of messy a little bit. I want to try to clean that up if I if I can. So you're going to see a final video on that very soon. Uh, this I I have uh, the original Mecha Collection Yamato. This is the 2199 Yamato, and this is the 2202 version. So putting these together, I mean, it's you know the stand is this one's taller, and you know you can position it more dynamic you know, poses and stuff. It's this they're using the same as, as they use for the Star Wars. Um anyhow though, even you know disregarding the, the, the height difference, you can see that these are different these are different models. So it they didn't just you know repop the twenty one ninety nine Yamato and uh, put a new put it in a new box or anything like that. No, this is a, a totally new kit. If I can show you real quick here, like uh, there is, well, first of all here, you can see that the width of the deck is different. That that the dick, the dick as as they say in uh, New Zealand. Oh my gosh, this little thing broke off. There was a thingy here, and it's now gone. I, I did not know that. I, it broke off. Oh my gosh. I have no idea. Hey, but you know what, though? I could probably, uh... I have, like, a whole half of a kit. I can probably just replace that. If I could pop that piece off... I, I, I have one kit that I had bought because the, the red part down here broke off. So I could probably just uh, pop that off. I think it's its own separate piece. I can pop it off and then replace it. Just paint up a new one and uh, and replace it. Uh, you can see that the the back thruster is, is wider. So, yeah, neat stuff. Okay, so moving on. Um, I really... I really can go ahead and just finish this up. But see, it's already collecting dust. I need to. I need to just finish this. So what you see here is like I, I had to like totally wet sand it because I used that accretion on here and it was not sticking to the gloss at all. It was just really crappy. So I had to wet sand this whole area down and then I repainted these these areas with just regular acrylic or actually no maybe I used the enamel I can't even remember I, th I think I put it on video I don't know but um, I did not use the black accretion after that I don't know what happened but that was just really weird and it happened here as well so there was a lot of imperfections with the the yellow paint here but you know I, I'm this has been a shelf queen for far too long and I'm just gonna just get this done and just you know it's it's not really that clean of a line here, but I'm just maybe just kind of fall forward. So for the most part, this thing is finished, and it was really disappointing how the the paint lifted off here, and how you know the masking masking tape on this acrylic was just just crap. Like you could see how the the masking pulled off, and I, I had let this cure for quite a while, but masking on a gloss acrylic just was just ugh. You could see where the masking tape went down. So the same thing happened to to uh, Rebels at Cloud Nine when he did that uh, that car of his, and this just really reinforces the fact that you know I, I'm from now on I'm just not even going to use acrylics on a car model unless there's zero masking involved this is just yeah and it's 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 collecting dust um I want to get this done though I just you know when something like this happens I'm, it just kind of discourages me and I'm like yeah I don't want to do this anymore Blah. And I put it down for a while, and I never get around to it. And then people are asking me, hey, what's going on? Blah. So, yeah. Um, what else? I'm going to finish this guy here. I need to do that. 
I'm working on the arms on Yuri looking a bit better I'm gonna sand this down maybe I'll, I'll try to paint this and see if there's you know seam lines or if it's if it looks all right because there's supposed to be a line here because this is where her her top goes right and it should be all right I guess boy it's hot in here and uh, you know what um, I think that's pretty much it oh wait no this this is finished as well I, I started this a while back and I just uploaded it to my my uh, tumblr feed but this is the Murasame mecha collection and I was hoping because I knew a guy who had an Alps printer and he had done the white decals for the Yukikaze and I was hoping he might be able to do this for me for this one too and maybe some other ones but um, I think he kind of ran out of ink and I kind of lost lost contact with him I guess so it's been a while it would uh, be kind of crappy to just um, send him an email and say hey can you do this stuff for me when I haven't really been talking to him for a long time so what I did was I put the stickers that come with the kit on and I went over this with a lacquer dull coat and they really don't even look like stickers much anymore they actually they're not too bad not bad so these stickers can withstand a, a coat of lacquer paint and uh, end up not looking too bad and I, what I did was I uh, used the, the my hobby knife to just cut into the the panel line there to kind of break up the the sticker so it le looks less stickery but yeah with the the dull coat on there it, it kind of cuts down on the shine so I'm going to show you my recent acquisitions yay okay I got my my desk cleared off here my workbench I moved a fan in the room here so I'm feeling better now I got this this is a uh, Tamiya model cleaning brush, anti-static. Now, I, I had been using this uh, cosmetic brush that I got at, I think, Target or something like that, like years ago, but it started to deteriorate. And because it was not anti-static, like the bristles would come off the brush and it would stick to the model and that is certainly not good so anyhow you have the, like these really soft brush bristles and so yeah it says it's suitable for cleaning intricate areas organic conductive fibers prevent static buildup and keep dust away from model and isn't that great i also have a mini brush here too so from her fine grooves. That's interesting. I haven't seen that. I picked this up at my local hobby shop. Yay. I also went ahead and got another pin vise. Um, because the one I have, it no longer can hold the point three, And this one goes as small as point one. so... Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably just continue to use the other one as my main one and use this for like the really small ones. So uh, the other one is it's not by Tamiya, it's by some uh, company here in Japan. I forget what, but I just got it at the home center. All right, moving on. This is Molotov Liquid Chrome. So Steve at SMKR recommended this stuff and it's alcohol based and apparently you can just load this directly into your airbrush without having to thin it apparently it says uh high gloss special ink shake well before use so this is it's a chrome pen um now this is not the actual pen this is actually just the refill and I got the refill because he said you could use this in your airbrush. So, neat. Okay. Now, um, of course, I have not yet to make an actual 
diorama of anything because I, I, I suck and that, that is one of my hurdles I need to overcome. I, you know, I haven't done something when, you know, I just need to push myself forward. And then once I get into it, then I, I can feel like I've accomplished something. You know, just like with, uh, with lighting. Um, I, I've only done one kit that I've, I've lit and it's, you know, that, uh, has been completed so far. But anyhow, I do want to do a diorama and, uh, because I already have three of the, the fine molds Y-Wings. And I also have the Bandai Y-Wing, but the Bandai Y-Wing has, like, this that cool section of, like, the, the engines and stuff. It'd be really, really awesome if I could make, uh, like, a diorama of, like, a Y-Wing that is being repaired. And so I got this. This is Retro Kits. They have these Rebel Pilots in relaxed poses. Let's, let's pull this out of the bag. This is cool, man. Now, I think what they did is maybe they could have used some of the 172 scale figures from like Hasegawa or something or other. Like, for example, this guy here. Uh, it looks like he's wearing sunglasses. So I think maybe they could have like plagiarized the head and it just did everything else with just the body, I think. That that may have happened, because you don't really see anybody wearing sunglasses or whatever in Star Wars. So whatever, people don't even wear glasses in Star Wars. But uh, so yeah, there's these guys wearing their um, their orange jumpsuits. So very cool. So yeah, these three have helmets on, and oh gosh, uh, I was sneezing like crazy when I did that Macross um, uh, unboxing as well a few days ago. Anyhow, I, I might uh, I might edit out the sneezing in this one too. Anyhow, so this one. Uh, hair so that's cool yeah so the, these two are they're holding their helmets so yeah pretty cool stuff now and I got two of these these are the rebel base floor lights so you could put an LED in here and having it shine onto your your kit so I want to have like a series of these lights on the ground Sorry, sniffling too much. I'll get over this cold. And see, there's a little bit of flash. You can yeah, punch through there. There. But yeah, um, you can have the, the lights coming through here. Shining onto the, the Y-Wing. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty neat. And the Y-Wing kit itself, it comes with a standing pilot and like the R2 and R5 droids. That would be pretty cool just to have uh, like a group of people standing around. If I could find like a 172 scale, like a mechanic or something rather, kind of working on the engine, that would be pretty neat. Um, of course, I have this, this power droid here as well. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but I got this off of Shapeways. I, I think I, I showed this maybe a month or so ago in an update. But, yeah, this kit has that really great engine detail here. So it would seem like a real shame to let that go to waste. So it would be cool to really kind of dry brush this up and, you know, make it dirty looking. That would be really cool. So... Yeah, pretty neat stuff. Okay, so let's move on. Now here's the actual models. Uh, you know what? Let me let me clean this stuff up here first. So seriously, there was some stupid reporter that was asking the screenwriter for the the Han Solo movie, and uh, the guy was uh, Joe 
Joe Kasdan, the son of, of Lawrence Kasdan, they asked him, hey, is, is it true that uh, Lando is a pansexual? And instead of just, like, saying, grow up, get your head out of the gutter, it's just a Star Wars movie, like, what he should have said, as just like a normal person, I guess, he had to, oh, oh wait, okay, hold on, you know, we have to be inclusive, and so he, he gave this, yeah, I, I guess so, kind of an attitude, and so then it became instant clickbait, and so Kathleen Kennedy has given us all a reason to just get, you know, just hate Star Wars, and another reason to not watch the movie to begin with, and, uh, so, yeah, they, they just can't resist putting their, their feet in their mouths. And it's stupid, because, you know, I just want Star Wars to be fun. And it sucks that uh, these, these, these idiots, uh, just Kathleen Kennedy is just no good. I, I, I really just don't want really to bother, I don't want to bother seeing a movie. I've, I've heard it's just not good. They can't even get the character of Han Solo right at all. So, yeah. Uh, I watched this one guy's video showing what he, his his pick for who would have made a really great Han Solo. The actor was perfect for it, but they didn't consider that guy. Uh, this guy Aaron Aaron Reich or whatever. Uh, I don't know what qualified him to be Han Solo, but giving the you know the way the way Hollywood is, he he probably uh, gives head or something and. Yeah, that's probably the only reason why. I don't know. I'm just so sick of Hollywood these days. That's why I'd rather just stay at home and just watch models, or build models instead of going out and watching a movie. Okay, so I got this. This is the F4U 1D Corsair. And this is by Hasegawa. And this is just a neat little 172 kit. And it's an older kit. Just got, you know, the suggestion of panel lines. Yes, they are raised, but in reality, you really wouldn't be able to see them much at all because the panels are pretty tight on these anyway, so, you know, whatever. But I love the, the bent wing on the Corsair. Now, the modeling, the, the instructions here, it, it, it calls for the color to be navy blue, and I have navy blue right here, and Mr. Hobby navy blue, and it's really not that blue, it's just kind of like a bluish black, it's not that great, however, I saw this in Model Graphics Magazine, this is the 40th anniversary, you know, I mentioned before I've gotten a few of these paints, this is previous blue, and this is what they say is the, the best color for these Corsairs, you know, here in Japan, and I, where you live, I have no idea, maybe they have a, a Vallejo paint that's really awesome, I have no idea, but, uh, yeah, Hobby Link Japan would be my first place to find Vallejo paints, and they don't even, they're all sold out, I, I told them, I sent an email saying, hey, you guys need to stock this stuff, but, uh, anyhow, um, yeah, so you can see the, the difference in colors here, this looks a lot nicer. It looks a lot nicer than the navy blue. So I need to get some canopy masks for this. Now you get two options. Yeah, pull this up. You could do the checkboarded pattern or the pattern with the arrows. So here you have the two different planes here. So this one has the arrow. I kind of like the arrow because it has that nice really beautiful yellow on the cowling. Or the checkerboard. Oh, which one? Huh? And the yellow is 329. Do I have number 329? Let's check. Oh my gosh, I totally do. Yeah, I have quite the paint selection of Mr. Color. So here, this is yellow 329. And this, that would look really fantastic. Yeah, that would be great. 
Mm. Sorry. I'm sniffling. I'm dropping crap on the floor, too. Alright. Let's pack this guy up. So, I got this. And... Oh my gosh. I got this. So, I, I've been mentioning to some guys for a while that since I'm working on this... Uh, this uh, fulcrum by Hasegawa. I was really wanting to get this Vesta kit here. This is a newer tooling. I, I think this Vesta used to have like an older fulcrum, and this is a new new tooling. So this is really great. You gotta open it up this way. And there's a box within the box. Now this is not my first Vesta kit that I've owned. Actually, I have a couple of small Vesta kits that. Uh, Jared gave me Rebels of Cloud Nine, and you know this. I don't know why they did this. Um, the pilot figure and the clear canopy are both in one bag, and I don't know why they wanted to do that. What I'll do is put the clear canopy in its own bag. I can't find a little small bag to put that in. There we go. Yeah, that, that'll fit. I got these at the 100 yen shop. So it looks like you get the HUD here, and it looks like the, that's the IRST module. And then you got these uh, lamps for the landing gears, it looks like. Is this going to even fit? Oh, for Bob's sake. That's the same size, isn't it? Is this even going to fit? Oh! Wait, it's the same size! Oh my gosh, I'm just struggling with minor motor skills here. You know what, I'm just going to get a big... big frickin' bag and just to say to hell with it, you know? To hell with it. There we go. Oh wait, that's the same size. Is it? I don't know. It totally is. Oh, screw it. I'll just put this aside. Anyhow, it's getting boring, I'm sorry. You have a standing pilot. And you have a sitting pilot. So this guy's looking pretty cool. He's like, yeah, I'm badass. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm badass. Is that a flight suit? Doesn't look like a flight suit to me. He's looking like he's... I don't know, man. He's dressed up like, he's got like a Jet Li type of a shirt, I don't know. And then uh, you got the, the sitting guy, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty much badass, I get to fly this thing. And he's got one arm is off, so you, you can position it, I guess, maybe, I don't know. So, and there's his ass, and his, uh, his pants. Isn't that lovely? Alright, I already collected a couple of these little pieces here. I already opened this up and some little parts fell off the, the runners and it looks like I got a little broken piece. I have to figure out what happened there. That is rather disturbing. Uh, that's perplexing. I don't like that. Uh, so all of this was in one big plastic bag and maybe that's the reason why I got a broken piece. It's kind of, you know, makes me not happy. It's not entirely good. In fact, I think it's kind of bad. Now, look at the detail on this. Oh my gosh. Oh my cow. Can you see that? Yeah, of course you can. Shut up. That is great. My gosh. And just to compare, you know, this is what I am building. Here, like, for example, take a look here at all of this smooth here. Like, this one section here is totally smooth, right? Now, the corresponding part here, and you got lots of more detail here. Now, notice that the the vents here, the intake vents are, are, are closed in this model. Here... 
they're open on top. And you don't really get an option. But, so, what happens is, uh, you know, they, they can uh, they can make these things take off anywhere, really. Because if it's just like a, like a dirt road, gravel road, or, you know, the kind of a makeshift airstrip, the intakes will block off here, and they'll open up here on top. And then when they take off, these things will shut down. These open up. So yeah, there is a considerably a lot more detail on this Vesta kit. Then again, the Hasegawa kit is, it's an older kit. I mean, it's been like since, since at least the 80s or so. And it's kind of, this is, it's kind of a testament to the kind of a, a problem of the Japanese modeling community. Well, not, not the community, but I, the the companies, I guess, because like Hasegawa has a MIG fulcrum, okay, and yet it's an older tooling, and it would be nice if they would come out with a better tooled kit, but they don't, and so other companies or Japanese companies are like, well, maybe we're not going to. Uh, Hasegawa kind of has the, you know, that their reputation is, is built mostly on, on, on airplane kits. And so nobody else is making another one of these kits. And so companies like Zvesto comes along and, you know, they're not interested in harmonious relationships, you know, ma maintaining all of these, uh, relationships with, uh, the company down the street because they're in another company or in another country. So, Japanese modelers are going to be like, hey, dude, let's, uh, let's buy this Vesta kit, right? So, it really helps out with, like, Beaver Corporation, you know, Hobby Lake Japan, that they can really capitalize on this because there's a lot of, uh, more innovation coming from countries like Russia or the Ukraine or, or the, the Czech Republic, Whereas here in Japan, it's just kind of, you know, come on, Hasegawa, you know, you got this, this old kit with, you know, for example, uh, well, they, they do have that uh, F-15 Eagle kit with raised panel lines, and then they did redo it in a bigger box with recessed panel lines, and that that's kind of what we would hope that they would do more, but whatever. Anyhow, enough of my ranting. So this one, the wings are a part of the model here, the part of the fuselage. That was one problem I had. Well, it wasn't a problem, but it would. This would be easier to assemble because the the wings were totally separate pieces. And if I remember right, the locator pegs were they they were like very small. I can't remember exactly, but this is nice that this is like an all in one. And they do come in like a top and bottom halves here. So here's here's the the top of the wings here. So yeah, this is a really swanky neat kit. And yeah, really cool. Oh, I have to find where the part that fell off the runner. I I have to identify where that other part is that. Apparently it was broken or something. Um, I'm not. I'm not happy about that, as I mentioned before. Yes, yeah, like uh, one of the parts here broke off. This little triangle thing here. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'll have to just follow the instructions when the time comes to build this. And let's look at the instructions. Let me put this in the bag here. You get different options, lots of uh, different decal options, and that makes me happy. Alright, so, check out these decals, oh my gosh, this is so awesome, totally really cool, look at this. Alright, now it looks kind of intimidating, but, like, if, 
Maybe it depends if I can get the the light to catch. Maybe you can see the detail. But like for example, like this is all one decal here. You got like one, two, three, four, five, six little points, and these are all one decal here. And here, these three are. This is all one decal. Here, this is all one decal. This is connected. These are connected. So it's it, you got a whole lot of stuff going on here, but a lot of them are connected together. It makes it easier. I like that idea. That that's that's really great. Because it would really suck. Try it'd be so tedious to try to put all of these tiny little things on one at a time. Man, that would suck. That would totally suck. So you got this this really beautiful. I got like a like a shining sun here. Got these uh, yellow and black stripes. I got this this neat uh, was a uh, looks like a goose. And you got like uh, these these two fighter jets chasing each other. And you got this this double headed eagle or whatever that is. Really cool stuff. And here are your options. So the first option is kind of like what you see on the box. All right, the box, you see the, the 51. Yeah, you see that? And that's what you get here. This is the Training Center Boris Sogolbsk, summer of 2001. Okay, well, there you go. And then you got, you know, this, that's the one that has this little eagle. And then you got this guy here. He's got this weird, uh, like a pointy hat man. I didn't notice that. Where is he? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Here's Mr. Pointy Hat Man right here. He's like, yeah, I'm cool. My mom made my hat. She said it makes me look intimidating and dangerous. So this is the Russian Air Force, 2015, Air Base in Armenia. Okay. Uh, congratulations, Armenia, in recent news. Good things are happening in Armenia. Happy about that. Um, and then this one, this is the really pretty one here. This is this has those red and black stripes, and it has those uh, that uh, shining sun. This is really cool. So this is the Rush MiG-29, uh, Russian Air Force 31, <laughs> 31st GIAP, whatever that is. This is 2008. Now the colors for these two are the same. Now, uh, 30 is gold gray, it says. And then uh, this one on top here, number 22, is state gray. What is state gray? Do you know... Oh! Oh, it gives a humbrol, state gray. Well, maybe I can look it up that way then, because I have no idea what state gray is supposed to be. Now this one is a different color. So this is number 31, which is dark gray. Okay. And that's home brawl dark gray. Well, I don't have home brawl. Uh, it, it might be possible to buy home brawl paints in Japan, but pff, whatever. I'm not a home brawl fan. Uh, especially not enamels. I, I know they have acrylics, but you know I'm not going to kill myself and and uh, investing space to expand another line of paints in my possession. It's not a high priority. So, let's put this back in the bag. Is there any way to get you to fit in here? Please? I just want you to get in that bag. Oh, it fits! Oh my gosh, it fits. Oh, this is the best day of my life. All right. All right, let's put all this away now. Let's move on to something else. Now, I paid for those two kits myself. And I bought that 
Macross 48 scale Valkyrie for my friend. And that really put me up a lot in my, my uh, points. And so I got a kit for free. And I'll, I'll show you that later. But for here, this is really beautiful. Now this actually I got with points. And this is a older kit. And Hasegawa, they, don't, they haven't been repopping this. So this is the Lancia Stratos Stradale. Stradale, 1972. Beautiful blue, isn't that nice? That's, that's pretty. Oh my gosh. Check it out. So you got the Lancia insignia here. Isn't that great? Of course it is. Now, I, I, I got this with my T-Points. Now, T-Points is like Staya, and Staya is like a chain of like uh, video rental stores. And yes, we do have video rental stores in Japan still. <laughs> I know in America, they pretty much don't anymore. And uh, so anyhow, but it's it's just like, they also have like, you know, you can buy new movies and music and magazines, and they get a bookstore and stuff like that, so... It's more than just video rental stuff, and you can use the T-Points anywhere. And I got a T-Point card. It's a Hatsune Miku T-Point card. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a big Hatsune Miku fan. It's just I thought that was cool, and it's more interesting to get something like that than to get uh, just a boring issue, standard one. All right, now I'm not going to open up the whole kit, but I will just show you the car body. So freaking cool. I mean, this looks like it's like from Crusher Joe or something, doesn't it? That is just so awesome. That's just freaking cool, man. They look at it like it's from some 80s anime or something, like it flies or something. That's just great. Now, they've re they've done several different versions of this car. So this to do like the regular street car you have to do some modifications. You get these, whatever the hell these things are. Sand those off. You got this panel here. And yeah, you gotta sand that off too. And I believe these, whatever the hell these things are here, you gotta sand these off here too. Okay. But, oh, freaking cool, man. Oh, man, Lancias are, I, okay. Alright, so like, I really geeked out to Lancia's. When I was a kid, we had the Disney Channel, and, um, was it Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, I think? The Herbie movies from the 60s? What was it? Yeah, I think it was Monte Carlo. And, uh, Herbie, the car falls in love with a Lancia. And that Lancia, I thought that was the coolest looking car. Like, wow, man, Lancias are so awesome. So I was like, really had this thing for Lancias for quite a while. Um, Tamiya has a really great, a really, oh gosh, it is the, the Lancia Stratos, the, the racing car. And it is the, the exact same car that Wheeljack from Transformers is, with the, the same numbers and everything. So eventually what I'd like to do is, is to get that Tamiya. It's an older car. It's an older kit. So, the, you know, it's kind of close to like maybe 4,000 yen or so these days. But um, I'd like to just like print out like an Autobot decal and, you know, put that on last. That would be really cool. All right. So it has, you know, rubber tires as most car kits do. Yeah, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I don't feel like opening this up right now. But um, inside the clear parts bag here, you got these really cool foil stickers. That's really great. So the Lancia Insignia that goes on the hood, you put this down and you put this on top of that one. That is really, really clever. I like that. You don't get any, like, uh, regular license plate. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Decals for li for the, uh, decals for the, the seat belts. Huh. Huh, that's cool. 
Oh, I did not notice that before. Oh, wait, I guess you do get, like, a regular European kind of a license plate there. Oh, that's cool. I'll do that then. Uh, because I, I like I like going for, like, you know, regular street cars instead of, like, uh, the, you know, or Stratos or whatever. The beautiful blue color is number 34, light blue. Let's see if I have it. Oh, look, I have it. It's this color right here. Sky blue. Is that a good match? I think we have a winner. That looks nice. Alright. So, yeah, I after what? This was like... Because ah, I, I didn't even notice this car before. Because it is an older kit. And I saw it. I'm like, dude, I want this. And I looked on Yahoo Shopping. And I found a place that had it for like 2,000 yen. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I had... What? I I had so many tea points that I this only cost me like maybe six hundred yen plus shipping. So freaking cool. I like Lancias. Now this is they have okay, so this is the of course it's an old legacy Yamato kit here. This is Dessler's command carrier, the, the the battle carrier. So this one it has like a flight deck, and it also has the uh, the cannon or whatever this thing is on the top. I can't remember. I'm sorry, guys. I, I know I suck. But now there are two versions of this kit. There's a smaller version, and I think the smaller version comes with the Mecha collection. Of this carrier here, the, the tri deck carrier. Now, in the 2199 universe, it's called the Daryl. It's a bit different. But it, obviously, you know, it's still pretty much the same ship. It's very recognizable. You got like, they look like pontoons, you know. So yeah, I would I'm going to use this paint set to paint this. I do want to get the 2199 the 1000 scale one. That would be really great as well. So uh obviously they didn't spend any time painting this. <laughs> they just assembled it and took pictures. They weren't really really concerned about scale when they were making these kits. These are mostly box scale with these old Yamato kits. Now this is cool. Apparently it, it, you have a function of swinging this open and then pulling this guy out. And then you can close the close the panels there. You see that? So it's just kind of like a four step process. So th this is like on some sort of like a hinge or something or other on the inside of the ship. So you can pull it out that way, and you can get these little fighters and put them on the deck here, and the guns move, of course, isn't that sweet? Well, it's just a large, very simplistic kit. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. Like here's the main deck here, and you got this empty space here, and here are your. I think there's like a top and bottom to these. I think that's what's going on here. And you have either side. So the whole glowing thing is more of a what they introduced into the 2199. You don't have that here in this kit. We got that um, the the name sticker there to put on the on the stand. And you get these little fighters. These uh, fighter bombers. Isn't that nice? Of course it is. Shut up. Alright. This it was like 900 yen. And I got one for my friend. And I got one for myself. Only 900 yen. Yeah, definitely. 
so what else? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I've been saving the best for last. Oh. Oh, but first, I got this. So, poor bastard's guide to modeling. Although, YouTube made him change his offensive name to Poor Guy's Guide to Modeling, unfortunately. He wanted this kit. This is basically the same kit as what I am... I've been... You know, I started, and it's... I've kind of shelved it for now, because I've been focusing on other stuff. But, yeah, this is just like the other one. This is the VF-1S. The one I'm doing is the VF-1J, the Max type. This is the 1S, so this is going to be Roy Fokers. So, yeah, I got this for you, guy. I'll mail this out to you. Hopefully I'll be feeling better. Alright, now, last but not least, I got this. I got this. This was free. Because I, I had accumulated so many Yodobashi points that I got this guy for free. I think I can get this. Get this. Look at that. This is the F4EJ Phantom 2 ADTW, whatever that is, 60th anniversary. Beautiful. So this is the Japanese Self Defense Force Phantom. In 148 scale. Dun, dun, dun. Now, there is a 172nd scale that is identical to this, but that is sold out. It is like out of stock, apparently, and so you have to get it second hand. And it's going for prices like pretty much the same as this 148 scale. So, I'm like, you know, just for a little bit more, and plus. You know, I used points, so I didn't really pay for this at all. So, yeah, uh, this this whole thing was was free. So I'm I'm entirely happy about that. So here you are, clear parts and everything else it is molded in black. Now this is recessed panel lines. You know, this is, uh, I've, I've seen people building the 48 scale Phantom on YouTube. So, you know, check out those videos. I, I don't, I'm not going to do a whole unboxing with this right now. But, you know, enjoy other videos. What you want to see here is this stellar decal sheet. Look at this, man. So, you got so much. Now, I'm not really sure how well these black things are going to be showing up on the black paint. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I would just have to put them on and see what it looks like. Maybe there's like some sort of an outline that I can't see because it's on the, the decal paper right now. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. But, check this out. I don't know if you can see this or not in the light. If I get it to reflect just right. But, just as with this Vesta, you have a whole bunch of decals that are like in clusters. So you have, this is all one cluster here. Less work to do. You got all this cluster here. That looks nice. Now, if you're really particular and you want to have to just totally cut it close to try to minimize the 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 decal out, outline, then you have a lot of work to do. But if you want to just put them down and you know not worry so much about it, this is probably a good way to go. Look, this is all one jibungus decal right here. All of this right here. Kind of it's shaped like a space invader or something. This is like, here's the arms and the head and the legs here. Um, this is all one here too. 
So the really great thing though is that you got this beautiful shiny gold. Ooh, it's pretty. And yeah. Uh, um I don't I can't read this. I don't, I don't know what this one is. Um, this one, Soda no Shori wa. So this is um, like the the success of the sky. Something or other. Oh yeah, technology. Okay, yeah. Uh, the six the the success of the sky is is in. Is, is found in technology. I think Ed even says that in English here. Yeah, here we go. Victory in the sky is achieved through technology. That's what it says right here. Well, okay. And this is this is what I thought was really cool. Is this that goes on the the rear? Uh, you know, the the vertical stabilizer. You got this. This, you know, you got these like you know, like a whole squadron of planes just kind of shoom like that. And you got this guy's like, hey, wait for me, guys. That's cool! And then down here, there's a blue version. Now, I like that blue. I like that. And then you got very similar. And you got this guy's like, whoosh, taking off. That's <laughs> so cool, man. Holy crap. Now box though the instructions well okay so you, obviously you have two different versions to build up you got this uh, 336 and you got this uh, 301 well the instructions yeah I just noticed I said the instructions this is one thing as a as a teacher in Japan. I sometimes like uh, if I, when I'm working with a Japanese teacher, they'll like stop the class and ask me, "Is it the or the?" I'm like, "Don't ask me. I don't know." It's just oh man, it really takes me off guard. I'm like, I, I can't explain it. It's just one of those things that we don't really think about when we are just speaking naturally in English, and then they ask you these questions. It's like. Oh, I don't know. Don't ask me. I, I just don't know. There's some sort of methodology to saying that. The, the would be more like specific. Instead of the, it's like maybe you don't care so much. I don't know. Anyhow, and enough of my rambling. So, here you get, right here, the number one. ADTW 60th Anniversary JASDF Gifu Air Base, October 2015. Alright, so there is no number two. You only have the number one. Now, you, you would have number two would be this. The 60th Anniversary. I kind of like the blue. So this one, it has like these large gold... V-shaped decals. This one has like the smaller V-shaped decal. But you know, are you sure you know where these go? I don't. Wait, do I? Do I? Wait, no. Actually, no. These go on the bottom. These go on the bottom. All right. All right. Well, that that took care of that. Now this the whole like uh the kanji where it says the success in the sky that or the what do they call it the victory in in the sky um that goes along the bottom here and on actually no no it goes on the the tanks here well if you want to you could just build it either way maybe they just uh, omitted that in the instructions because it was pretty obvious maybe all of all of the decals are identical except just the the pilot uh, number or the, the there's the pilot name and then the, the plane number and then the decals so 
what do you, the people at home, think? What do you think looks nicer? So this has a decal here. Actually, this is the blue emblem here. Well, that's number 12. I might not be able to find the number 12 decal on here. They might not have that. Huh. So, it might just have to come down to reference. Oh, no, no, this is the number 12 right here. The thing in the middle. Okay. Hmm. Alright, well, what are your opinions? The, the kit standard? Or go with the blue? I am kind of leaning towards the blue. What, so what do you guys think? What, what, what do you think looks cool? Of course, I'm just going to do what I want to do, but I'm just, you know, I'm looking for opinions. So. All right. So, is that it? Actually, no, it's not. I am a crazy man. So, yeah, I got some real cheap kits. I got some free. I got one uh, free kit. And, look at this. All right, so to give you an idea here, a typical Mecha collection, Yamato Mecha collection size box is this tall. The Andromeda was a bit taller. Okay, now I got this as well. <laughs> this is on a total whim. This is the Apollo Norm. <laughs> so yeah, it's like <laughs> stepping up here. <laughs> So, the Apollo Norm, let's look at this. Oh my gosh. So, it's essentially the Andromeda with this uh, flight deck on the back. Hmm. I know there's some people who are kind of whining about it. They don't like the whole deck on the back and, you know, whatever. I think it looks cool. It's not supposed to look, you know, practical because it's, it's a space vehicle. You know, it's a... It's meant for outer space, so I don't care if there's no center of gravity to this thing, you know? Um, so here are the big flight deck parts here. The bridge is different from the Andromeda bridge. And here you can build this up as the Apollo Norm, which is number three, or the Antares, number five. So, yeah, right here, it, e it even says Andromeda. So, these runners are identical to the Andromeda. Yep, they all say Andromeda on there. The flight deck part is what's different. So, I believe this is going to have the bridge parts for the Andromeda that you're not going to use for this model. So, uh, I got this for, what, 720 yen? So, it didn't really kill me to buy this. So, oh, that's right. One other thing I could show you guys. Where is it? Where's the darn box? I have been slowly working on uh, P40. This is the Academy one. See, this is the the one by Academy, the 72nd scale. It's really not a, that great of a kit. This is, this is like from the 60s or so. This is like a really old kit. Uh, the, the I think the the molds had been polished so much that uh, the the recessed panel lines have kind of disappeared in a lot of areas. I had to rescribe this. So this has just been practiced with rescribing panel lines. Uh, this Academy kit, originally, it was by Frog, which is like a really old model company from the 60s or so. So, yeah, neat stuff. So, I'm going to be just featuring this build on my Tumblr blog. I'm not going to make a video series of it. However, when I do start on, like, the Airfix or maybe the 148 scale, um... By by Academy, I'll 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 make videos of those, but for this one, I'm I'm just you know, I'm just building this just for myself and just to put on pictures of it on my, on my uh, my my Tumblr, uh, modeling blog. I don't know how to call it a blog, but 
It's not really a blog. So, for this month, I am happy to say that I have not received any crappy comments from any dorks. There have been no comments from any fart wagons or douche nozzles or turd copters or or crap weasels. It's been a nice month so far. I haven't gotten any crappy comments and uh, I'm just amazed. A month has gone by and I haven't gotten any stupid comments. So I'm happy about that. That That's nice. Uh, that, that, that's, that's one thing, you know, I, I, people and with this uh, flanker group build, you know, I got some people that are going to be doing videos. Um, it's fun to share. It's more fun to share. Oh, sorry, that was from uh, Yo Gabba Gabba. Um, I missed that show. It was great. Uh, what was I saying? It's it's fun to do these videos, but it also you just have to just have some thick skin. You're always going to find people who give you crap, and you just can't let them get to you. And I've I've seen how this really has hurt people in the past. And it just makes me sad because I just wish that, you know, people would just be kinder to each other. And of course, that's too much to ask for. So, really, you just gotta... Just just don't let people get to you too much. You know, it, it's not worth it. Because it's not like these people who comment are usually... They're not even people who are really, like, uh regular watchers, I don't think. And so, with this hobby, it attracts... How would you say it? Rather obsessive people. You got a lot of rather um, <laughs> kind of autistic people with no social skills, I imagine. Uh, you know, I... I admit, I, I'm an introvert myself, and I, I can be kind of a spurg at times. I don't know if I am or not, but, you know, I don't really care to find out. Um, you know, I might joke about uh, having Tourette's, which is possible. But uh, I, I don't like these type of labels, so I usually avoid it. I will say, though, that uh, these 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 modeling videos. There's a lot in the audience. There, there's not a lot, but considerably enough that I, I think it's just because of the obsessive quality of of people that are are attracted to to this this uh, this hobby. Um, some of them just lack social skills. And what really kills me, though, is that it's not just the people who are commenting, but even those who are, you know, they actually have online, uh, uh, you know, YouTube channels or whatever, the actual content providers, people who actually upload videos, I've seen bullying and just real nastiness and pettiness that happens with that. And I've seen people just give up in frustration and it's just, oh man, it's just a bad way to go. So, I really appreciate people who give me feedback, and people who give me suggestions, people who give me recommendations. It's okay to say that, you know, point out somebody's mistakes. You know, you can say, hey, you know, I noticed you did that, you could try this instead. You know, that's that's a good way to do it, but... If you're just saying, oh, you know, you're, you're stupid, and you're dumb, and, um, yeah, that's not the, the good way to go. So, yeah, I'm happy. This month has been quiet in terms of jerks. So, let's move on to posts that make me happy. So here's a message from Renan Venancio. I think I said that right. I hope so. I, I, I pronounced that right. Your videos are so funny and your tone of voice is very relaxing. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Hope it doesn't sound creepy, but watching your videos makes me feel better when I have a bad day at work. That is not creepy at all. 
That is not creepy at all. He says your, your videos about Metal Slug figures you painted for your friend was the first video I've watched and is to this day my favorite. That, that reminds me, I still haven't bought the Metal Slug tank by Wave. I had the Chinese knockoff one, but I sold that in anticipating getting, in anticipation of, of buying the the Wave one, but I haven't gotten around to buying that yet. So I told him, I, I, I really enjoy watching relaxing videos of modeling. Uh, Rebels of Cloud Nine, and also uh, what bashing kits. That guy has like really relaxing videos, and very informative too. I really enjoy it. Um, it helps if you have a British accent, I guess, if you want to be like really relaxing. Uh, I do not, but uh, saying such things is not creepy at all. Because I had this one guy. He was like. Um, yeah, I want to just contact you like directly instead of saying something online. I'm like, yeah, sure. So I give him my email, and he's like, I'm a bisexual, and I really am a, so attracted to your hairy arms. And, and I'm like, so bisexual, um, what kind of girls do you like? You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't want to know, man. I just don't want to know. That was creepy. Renan, you are not creepy. You're cool in my book, so thanks. In other news, I've been talking with the model kit base about uh, both of us. We we have these uh, Back to the Future DeLoreans that we've been working on, and well, they've been they've become shelf queens. And I've been talking with him. I said, okay, let's let's do it. Let's let's both make a point to get our Back to the Future DeLoreans done by the end of this summer. So. Hopefully this is going to be it. Uh, I, I gave until maybe uh, October 31st, uh, unless both of us get it done before then. But we, yeah, at least until October 31st, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to to finish them. So yeah, look for that. It's finally going to happen. It's been kind of a, a started out as a buddy build with Rebels of Cloud Nine, and it kind of uh, he finished his real quick. And I kind of, you know, lost interest in this kit twice already. I had some setbacks, and uh, I was doing it with a uh, model kit base for a while. Yeah, we we're hopefully gonna have it make it happen this summer. As for the Battlestar Galactica buddy build with SMKR, I do want to get back to that. Uh, for a while, I was kind of having a mental roadblock because uh, I had seen a video on doing photo etch, and or was it a magazine? Maybe it was in Fine Scale. It was talking about um, some sort of a tool for bending photo etch, and I thought because I'm new to photo etch, and I thought I would have to buy something like that, but uh, I've come to realize it's not really necessary. What I could do is just use a metal ruler and just bend the the photo etch with that and uh, just just be careful with it so I guess it's not rocket science and I was making it bigger than it really was so yeah I, I do want to get back to that um, and for the Russian flanker uh, build group the group build um, it's not too late to join please do I just had uh, Moonwalker models he, he joined and um, yeah, it's uh, I I I haven't touched mine in a while, but I will be getting back to mine really shortly. And with my plans, you know, I'm I'm thinking I might be able to knock out uh, two separate flankers before December 31st. But <laughs> yeah, that's that's just the way I always think. I, I'll be lucky if I get one done. Uh, anyhow, um, yeah, I've just been focusing on the fulcrum, but between, um, you know, vacations and uh, two illnesses so far this this past month, I've um, kind of, my progress has slowed, and, and also having the Xbox 360 uh, given to me kind of has slowed me down as well. But, uh, yeah, definitely um, feel free to join. Okay, so I'm having to redo the ending of this video. I had 
finished this video yesterday when I was uh, uh, stayed I stayed at home I was sick and that was May 30th and during that video and when I was recording I, I mentioned hey I'm this is really great a month has gone by and I haven't gotten any crappy comments and as I was processing the video I noticed that there was a comment that had been caught by my filter and uh, except, you know I have a filter that uh, picks up certain key phrases and you know has it awaiting review it just doesn't automatically post on my on my uh, on my, my videos so it's, it's kind of like a precaution you know it's, it's not just for you know I don't want people to be you know just trashing me but I also don't want you know, I kind of want to protect these people from you know just embarrassing themselves I guess with uh, their their puerile behavior uh, you know they, they they can maybe try go going somewhere else for that kind of stuff so <clears throat> I this is actually somebody that I know and uh, this is <clears throat> it, this 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 goes to like uh, what I was mentioning earlier oh okay let, let, let me back up you know I've met a lot of great people through this and it's been great I've 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 met a lot of you know great people you know people in um, uh, through YouTube I've, I've met people in what you know all over you know England Canada um, even like uh, the, you know Saudi Arabia I've got a really dear friend in Saudi Arabia I got a uh, no guy in South Africa you know New Zealand Australia just y you name it right so it's been a good experience but as I mentioned before there are these these people who I think a lot of us can be socially stunted at times um, you know I, I, I certainly have a hard time dealing with people who I call normies you know I just uh, I, I tend to gravitate more towards people who are passionate about some things it's, it's my philosophy that you're either weird or you're boring and being weird is cool but also you know there are some people who are weird in bad ways and so what happened was that this guy it, he just uh, mentioned to me that uh, he he had this transaction on something called carousel I, I don't even know what that is it's on Rakuten I've never seen it before I don't know what it whatever it is and he just mentions that uh, he had a bad transaction and he uh, emailed this woman and he threatened to kill her and uh, basically you know he, he was also uh, mentioned about her her child as well and in, in, in this uh, this threat to her and I'm like you know this is not maybe somebody I want to spend time with talking very much to so um you know I I, I, I found I would find myself in video chats and you know I'm like you know I, I ended up starting starting making up excuses to get off the the video phone you know the the Google Hangouts with this guy and uh, especially you know when, when my wife was needing me to do stuff and I'm like look my wife is calling me and I've got to do stuff you know I need to participate in you know my role in, in in my own family and then he would not respect that and he would keep rattling on and I'd have to hang up on him and he seemed to kind of learn his lesson a little bit but you know at the same time he I mean, he mentioned about how you know he, he threatened this woman and you know yeah maybe she is a jerk maybe she she uh, she ripped him off I don't know I don't know the whole story but you don't threaten to kill people that's just not cool so I gave him the cold shoulder, and on you know, in the Google Hangouts, and like just day after day, he'd be like, "Hey, Greg, are you there? Greg, Greg, are you there? Are you there? Greg, Greg, are you there?" The the, the next day comes along, Greg, hey, Greg, are you there? Hey, let's talk. Hey, are you there? Are you free? Greg, okay, I'll I'll talk to you later. Greg, Greg, it's just what the hell? I was hoping that the guy would uh, get the clue with me giving the cold shoulder, and he didn't. So I had to kind of confront him and I told him exactly why and I said look you know you don't threaten 
people. You don't you don't threaten to kill people. You don't threaten their their children. And he was one to argue. Oh, well, I wouldn't threaten a child. You know, I I just uh, threatened to kill the woman, and so that her her child would be in an orphanage. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm a parent myself, and you know, I'm not gonna just forget this. This is weird, man. Uh, he was one to argue about that. It's like, oh yeah, all right, my mistake. Sorry, I'm 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 a jerk. Yeah, you have every right to threaten to kill people. Yeah. So. I ended up blocking this guy on on Google Hangouts. Now, I wouldn't have mentioned this at all until I got this. This was on my YouTube channel. And he made the decision to make this public for everybody to read. Now, fortunately for him, I have my filter. And the filter will, will prevent certain types of comments from going public and it will be you know await my my pending approval so this 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 message here he posted on on my uh one of my unboxing videos the the 148 scale macros the hasagawa uh, valkyrie greg really loves people who happen to be assholes to other people okay whatever I, I really have the right to say, knock your brains out until you bleed to death and your child ended up in an orphanage. Actually, you don't, okay? And the fact that I have to point this out, that really says a lot, okay? That's psychotic. You don't do that, all right? People would have the right to call the police on you. For, for doing that kind of thing. So yeah, so he says I have really the right to say this to the woman who really happened to be an asshole and a single mother on carousel. It doesn't matter. You don't threaten people's lives. So Greg would not apologize for blocking me on Google. Yeah, I, I would not apologize. Okay, just as I, I'm not expecting this guy to apologize for relentlessly pestering me constantly, day after day. When I'm not even online, just these message after message. Crazy. You have been so kind to me, but you really are a, a really a cutthroat, backstabbing asshole as well. Well, I don't think I've really stabbed anybody in the back. You know, you'll notice that I've, I'm not even putting this guy's face or his, uh, his, his name, his username. Now, I'm still protecting this guy, even though I really shouldn't. But again, I don't like bullying. I don't like harassment. So that this is why I'm 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 saying this. I I am really kind to you and willing to have a talk. Well, no, you're not kind. Okay. Um. Not not if you're just harassing somebody who is giving you the silent treatment, day after day after day after day. You know, willing to have a talk. Well, you've demonstrated that. Yes, definitely. You are very, very willing. Um, however, I'm not. Uh, if I see your face again in Japan, well, he's never seen me in person, which I won't be really kind to you at all. Well, you know, if I come home and I see my pet rabbit boiling in a pot on the stove, you know, I this guy might be my number one suspect. Uh... This is really, really creepy, really psychotic. You don't do this to people. It's just not cool. So, again, I would not have even tacked this onto this video, except that this was posted on my channel. And you don't do this. And to anybody else, be careful with who you associate with online. On, on YouTube or anywhere. Social media is a, a great tool of bringing people together, but you know, you end up attracting some rather disturbed individuals who, even after explaining to them, you don't threaten to p kill people, that's just not cool. It still goes over their head. So, yeah. Anyhow, I'm ending the video here. Guys, everybody, be safe. Be careful with who you talk with online. And uh, I'll uh, 
have another video up another time. <laughs> Bye.